Ali, President Sudangal Whips Jr., welcome to the Pacific. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, share about Palau. I'm always uh, eager to do that. Now, let's start with the biggest news story this week, Japan releasing nuclear wastewater into the Pacific. Now, you were the first Pacific leader to support this following your visit to the Fukushima power plant in June. Now, there's been a lot of public backlash. Do you still support Japan's decision on this? You know, I think the first the first thing that I'd like to say is that we like to use the term nuclear wastewater. I think it's uh, treated water. Uh, it's Alps treated water. You know, they're not releasing what's the, the the waste that they're releasing has been treated. So they've taken out everything except that one uh, chemical that's being released that's at a very low level. It's actually acceptable by WHO standards and, and everybody else's standards. So I think that's the first misconception that uh, people have. So, yes, I stand by uh, the decision that I made uh, months ago, uh, which was I support transparency. I support uh, uh, a methodical uh, basis for doing this uh, to use the best science and data to make sure that the impact on the environment, especially the ocean, which not only uh, the people of Japan depend on, but all of us in the Pacific depend on, is not impacted uh, mm. uh, negatively. Currently, there is uh, wastewater coming out of plants in China and in Korea, nuclear plants, that have the same uh, level of uh, uh, chemical in them, uh, uh, but actually as much as four times or ten times higher than what's being released at Fukushima. So what would be your response to the Pacific community and other Pacific leaders who are against this? Well, you know, I understand the fear because we, we know what happened in the Washer Islands. Of course, we know what happened uh, in Chernobyl. We know, we know the impacts that um, uh, and the fears people have around nuclear uh, issues. And, you know, if, if, I, if I have anything to share with our, my Pacific brothers and, and sisters, it's we have to trust each other. We have to have ways that we find solutions to get get through these problems. OK, let's move on to other matters. What do you think is the biggest issue facing the region right now? Well, you know, I think it's the geopolitical situation with security. Uh, I mean, we're of course, we've always had climate change. Climate change continues to be our our greatest uh, challenge. But now uh, with uh, I, I call them the two big elephants. That would be the United States and China uh, uh, trampling around. We are definitely concerned that we might get trampled on out here in the Pacific. Uh, and uh, if anything, uh, you know, uh, of course, uh, uh, there's been uh, uh, AUKUS. There's been other uh, initiatives that have been done. And I think most importantly, we believe that uh, you gain uh, peace through strength. It's fundamental uh, for prosperity to have security. And so, so security in our region, uh, keeping peace is so critical. And, and, and we need to continue to find ways to reduce tensions and bring uh, a cooperation uh, between these countries together and, and continue to promote a free and open Indo-Pacific. OK, so let's look at China and the USA, who have both been making their presence felt in the Pacific region. Palau obviously has diplomatic ties with Taiwan and not China. Is this another issue you sense could be having an impact on regional unity? We believe that uh, we are friends to all and enemies to none. And uh, we've always had the position that uh, uh, we, we want diplomatic relations with all countries. Uh, it's the only problem is China will not allow us to have diplomatic relations with Taiwan and also with China. So they have chosen not to have diplomatic relations with us. And uh, uh, I don't think it's a, a matter of disunity among the Pacific. It's just uh, we choose to be friends to all and not take sides. OK, let's move to the upcoming Pacific Islands Leaders Forum meeting that's coming up in November and a new Secretary General will be selected. You've said yourself that the candidate must come from Micronesia and Baron Wonga seems to be the candidate of choice. Will you be supporting his selection? Uh, we, we, as, as the Micronesians uh, all agreed, 
to support one candidate to be presented to the forum and uh, for the forum to decide. So uh, that candidate was put forward at the last forum meeting. And I'm sure at our upcoming meeting, there will be discussions because we've already heard uh, some questions uh, from other countries as to his um, candidacy. And, you know, uh, Palau, we, we always believe in oh, an open and transparent system. And uh, we're open to hear what all countries um, have to say uh, on this important position. Because at the end of the day, we want the best candidate to help lead uh, the Pacific and work with us to, br to bring the, the Pacific continent together. Mr. President, what are the key issues you'll look to raise at the PIF meeting in Rarotonga? Well, you know, one of the things that I've been I've been uh, talking to, uh, I've had friends from Japan with me this morning, Australia. We just signed the air services agreement with uh, Air New Guinea this morning. Uh, is talk about uh, regional transportation. You know, we have a huge area, uh, and one of our major challenges in economic development is connectivity. And and the only way to get good connectivity and reasonable connectivity is 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 really trying to find those efficiencies and working together uh, with these regional carriers, hopefully to provide better service at lower cost to all our people to encourage uh, and support economic development. Mr. President, that's all we have time for. Thank you so much for speaking to the Pacific. Mesulang. Well, Mesulang. And uh, hope to see you in Palau next, uh, next, uh, next interview. And, and invite all your friends to come and visit. Yeah.